Okay, so now let's figure out how to calculate a circuit that contains a resistor and a capacitor connected in series. So we call this a series RC circuit. And the process is very much the same as the way we calculated the series RL circuit. Once we get the right adjustments made and the right vector is pointing in the right direction, the math ends up being exactly the same. So for starters, let's identify the two rules that are going to help us get the vectors in all the right places. Okay, so just like we did with the series RL circuit, there are two things that we know about a series RC circuit that we'll use as our anchor information. So what's the first thing we know? It's a series circuit, okay? And a series circuit has always had the same rule. We learned it in DC circuits. We just used it with the series RL circuits. And that is that the one thing that is constant throughout the entire circuit, no matter where you take the measurement, you will always measure the same number if you are measuring current. So current is constant. Okay, really important information. And the good news is that it's a very familiar piece of information, I hope. So that's what we know about this circuit because it's a series circuit. Now the question is, what do we know because it's a capacitive circuit? Okay, what's the relationship between voltage and current at the resistor? They're in phase, right? There's no phase shift takes place. The phase shift occurs at the capacitor. And what do we know about the relationship between the voltage vector and the current vector with the capacitor? Okay, we said that the current leads the voltage, right? In an inductive circuit, the current lags the voltage. Now in a capacitive circuit, the current leads the voltage. Okay, so those are the two pieces of information. Those are the two pieces of information that we need to build our triangles. Okay, so for starters, let's draw three vectors to use to build our triangles. And they're going to be current vectors because current is constant. So we're going to put it at zero degrees. That's where we start. So there's one current vector at zero degrees. A second current vector at zero degrees. and a third current vector at zero degrees. Now we're gonna build three triangles to form uh, our understanding of the other three variables. So we have four variables, resistance, current, voltage, and power. We already know about the current, there it is. I equals. And so the other three variables First of all, resistance. Well, let's upgrade that term from now on. Let's use the term impedance. So this first vector we'll use to build our impedance triangle. The second one is going to tell us about all of our voltages. And the third current vector we'll use to talk about all of our powers. Okay, so there we are. That's basically just utilizing this first point, current is constant. Now let's move on and talk about I leading E. So if the current is leading the voltage, that's going to help us build our triangles. Before we jump into that, let's start at the resistor. Is there any leading or lagging taking place here? At the resistor, it's in phase. So let's look at our voltages specifically. Okay, at our voltages, we will have a voltage vector which will be in phase with the current. And that will be the voltage drop at the resistor. So we'll call this E subscript R. Next, let's look at the voltage here at the capacitor. So current leads the voltage, or the voltage lags the current. So if this is our current at zero degrees, and remember forward direction 
is counterclockwise. So if the voltage is lagging the current, it's going to be chasing it around in this forward direction, which means it's going to be behind it. Okay, so we could draw it here. So there's the voltage vector, 90 degrees behind the current vector. So current leads voltage or voltage lags current. There's that 90 degree relationship. Okay, but that's not actually where we're going to draw that vector, is it? Because ultimately what we're doing is vector addition, which means we need to place the vectors tip to tail. So that's not where it belongs. It's the right direction, but let's slide it out here to the tip of the vector representing the voltage drop at the resistor. So we can place them tip to tail so we can do our vector addition. So we get a resultant vector right there. Okay, and that resultant vector is our total voltage in the circuit or our applied voltage. So EA equals the hypotenuse of our voltage triangle. Okay, so now we have a particular angle which represents the phase shift in our circuit. Okay, and that angle will be the same for all three triangles because all three triangles represent the same circuit. Okay, just different variables within that circuit, but the same circuit. So whatever this angle is, the phase shift will be the same throughout the entire circuit. So we can draw the other two triangles. So what do we have here? We have three variables representing the impedance of our triangle. So the impedance, which is in phase with the current, is going to be the resistance. The impedance, which is in phase with, sorry, I didn't write it here. This is E subscript C, isn't it? That's the, the voltage drop across the capacitor, okay? So that's the voltage vector at 270 degrees, and the impedance vector at that same 270 degrees will be XC, capacitive reactance. So the resistance added to, with the appropriate phase relationship, the capacitive reactance gives us our total impedance of the circuit. So Z is the hypotenuse of our impedance triangle. That is the total impedance of our circuit. And finally, our power triangle. So we'll draw the same three vectors, recognizing that that is the same angle there. I didn't draw it here, but that's the same angle there. And what are our three powers? The power that is at zero degrees in phase with the current is our true power. The power at 270 degrees is our reactive power, RP, and I will subscript that C, reactive power, as a result of that capacitor. And finally, the hypotenuse is AP, or a pair of power. So there's our three triangles. There are all of our variables that we will use to calculate our circuit once we get some numbers to, to do the math. One final thought, again, and I'm going to slide it right in here, is power factor. Okay, ultimately, that's what this is about, right? We're trying to find out the power factor, which is the phase relationship here. Okay, so what is this angle? What is the angle theta? And power factor is calculated in the very same way that it was in the series RL circuit. Okay, in fact, a hint for what's to come, it will always be calculated the same way. It is the true power divided by the apparent power. Or... We could use any one of the triangles, right? Well, what is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse? That is the cos of the angle theta. Okay, same conversation we've already had about power factor is true here as well. The one final point that I want to make about this, however, is that the power factor, once you've calculated this to be a, a decimal number, something between 0 and 1, it also needs some units, so to speak. Everything that we calculate must have units. The, the power factor needs one additional piece of information, okay? In the series RL circuit, where the current lagged the voltage, we said that the power factor was a lagging power factor. Now, because the current leads the voltage in a capacitive circuit, we say that the power factor 
is a leading power factor. Okay, so the power factor, either leading or lagging, is always answering the question, what is the current doing relative to the voltage? Okay, because the voltage comes from the power supply, the current ultimately is going to depend on the nature of the circuit. Okay, if in our circuit we have an inductor, then we will have a lagging power supply, sorry, a lagging power factor, because the current will lag the voltage. In this case, because we have a capacitive circuit, the current leads the voltage, and we say that we have a leading power factor. Okay, so there's all of the theory um, without any numbers. So the next step is to put some numbers in here and try to crunch those numbers and do the math.